ladies and gentlemen, you may not believe it, but right after my talk with Dragon Tan, the HDB released a news price indicator that shows that over last quarter, the prices shot up again. And interestingly, I believe that the HDB resale price will continue to go up higher and higher. And this is my analysis why. Makes you watch it to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, the title of my talk is Major HDB Resale Price Escalation Has Just Happened and More Will Be Coming Even Soon. Let's watch all the way to the end to see the analysis. This is my usual disclaimer about investment, whether it be in stock market or in property market. So on the 2nd of April, the HDB has released a news that shows that the HDB resale price has risen at a quicker pace of 1.7% in the first quarter. And that rise is even higher than the previous quarter of 1.1%. Now, this is the 16th consecutive quarter of price increase of the HDB resale price since second quarter of 2020. And this is quite an interesting news. So let's see what has led to this increase and also my analysis why you will continue to increase even further. Now, clearly, this is more eye boggling. We have now a total of 185 flats that's just changed hands. There's at least $1 million and above for the last quarter that have just passed. $1 million HDB flats, they are now 185. And this is an increase from the 133 in the previous quarter. Very interesting to see HDB flats registering $1 million. I think uh, there is a lot of uh, insights to this. Uh, so in 2022, the number of HDB flats that are registering $1 million and above was 369. Take note of this number, 369 units for the whole year. And last year, 2023, from 339, he has risen to 460 units. So 369, risen to 460. So what do you think the number would be for 2024 in terms of million dollar resale flats? I think it's easily 185, assuming it doesn't rise and it just stay where it is, 185, and then the next quarter, 185, and the next quarter, 185, and then 185 you will already have a staggering of $740 million HDB resale flats. And that's a phenomenal jump from the 460 unit. So we can clearly see a huge price escalation on top of what the top line number of 1.7% price increase would be. So before everybody jump any further, I would like to say that the 185 is assuming it's flat, but it's not, it's going up. So it could be 185, 200, 210, 220, or 230, whatever. It might even cross 800 units for million dollar HDB resale flats. Now, I should be happy because I'm sitting on one, you know, the flats in my type in my area right now are registering all above $1 million. And maybe in time to come, maybe even above 1.1, but that's not the point. The point is that uh, it's actually very common right now to see a uh, million dollar HDB resale flats. So where are these million dollar HDB resale flats? There are quite a lot of them, mostly in the mature estate, especially Bishan, Bukit Merah, Kalang Wampo, Topayo, Queenstown, Amokyo. Uh, but recently, it's gotten a lot more in the non-mature estates, like Jurong East uh, clearly is one of them, Aogang, Pongo, Woodlands, I think Sengkang has recently registered as well. So all these are very, very common right now across the whole island. So the highest record right now, it's a five-room flat at the 40th to the 42nd floor at the peak at Topayo. I think it's a beautiful place. It has exchanged for $1.56888 million. Okay, so this is the highest transacted price ever for HDB resale flat. I think in time to come, if this trend continues, uh, maybe even $1.7, $1.8. $2 million is not unthinkable, right? So now I can't be alone watching this exciting news, okay? I'm sure people are buying also worrying, okay? So this will cause more people to jump in to, to want to buy, bid the whole prices up before it's too late. The question right now is why is this happening? These are very unusual circumstances, seemingly like 1997, 96, 97 period uh, where I was very familiar with because I was then a property agent. The similar thing actually uh, happened, of course not million dollars, but there was a mad rush for property. But let's analyze why is this happening. So the first thing we need to take note of is that 
Remember, 15 months ago, the government launched a policy that big people who sell their private property uh, cannot buy HDB resale flat until they wait out 15 months. So guess what right now? In January 2024, that first batch of 15-month uh, waiters is just eligible now to buy HDB resale flat. So these people has been waiting for 15 months and flush with a ton of cash from the sale of their private property. What do you think they did? Of course, right? they cannot tahan anymore. They see the prices gone up over the last 15 months. They just dive in and just quickly transacted, right? So but this is my guess. Okay, I, I don't have numbers to prove it, but this is what the analysts say, okay? So right now, that 15-month wait period, the waiters has just completed. And right now, they, they really went all out to get it because the 15 months of waiting cost them a hell of money, okay? Because the prices have gone up phenomenally. So this is the one of the main reasons why I think the HDB resale flat has risen. And this is also one of the reasons why I think the HDB resale flat will continue to price escalate phenomenally because more and more of the private property waiters who sold their condos and landed property has been dying to buy a resale flat. The 15 months of wait is over and they are all coming into the dive. The 15 months is over and they are going for the queue for the HDB resale flats. The whole HDB price escalation is not just entirely caused by the condo and landed property downgraders. There is an increasing trend of young Singaporeans between age of 28 to 35. They didn't want to buy BTO flats. They just dive right into HDB resale flats. And a lot of times these HDB resale flats are quite old already, two to three decades old. I actually thought that once the HDB flats go beyond a certain age, people won't buy them anymore because the 99 year lease is running out, right? But it's not true. The, over, the HDB resale transaction, they are 40 years and above, have risen and made up about 11.6% of the total transaction and it's now increasing to 18% and soon will be 20%. I think the main reason is that current BTO flats are right now mainly in not so choice location to them, uh, but buying in a resale flat, there's a lot of grants given. Uh, there's possibility of them staying near to their parents. A lot of all these first-time home buyers, they look into resale instead of BTOs. Another main reason why HDB resale flats are more laku, which is more attractive right now, is because the low private property mortgage loan rates are quite high, right? So uh, right now, you know, it's very common to see people paying 3 to 4%, okay? Even the promotional rates are closer to 3%. But the HDB home loan rates is about 2.6%. So uh, they, they pay a cheaper interest rate if they buy a HDB and take a HDB loan. So uh, they lower the cost of ownership in that sense. This is a very interesting angle to it, you know, that actually cost of ownership, even though the top line might be higher, but the cost of ownership, uh, the gap may be narrower if they actually go and buy HDB resale flat because of the interest rate differential. The HDB mortgage rate of 2.6% is, is somewhat lower than the market rate of 3 or 4%. So uh, the cost of ownership, despite the top line price difference, uh, is actually narrower. So this is a very interesting finding. People actually calculate and find out these differences. So I thought they are actually quite smart uh, to see this. No wonder nowadays I see more and more bigger cars and uh, luxury cars in my HDB estate. You know? I see a uh, sports car, Mercedes and uh, BMWs and <laughs> Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all this uh, in HDB estate, something I've never seen before. So the question really is, will, will the HDB price escalation continue? My take is, uh, the answer is yes, looking at all the factors that I've highlighted earlier, but there are also factors that are against it, right? So the government has stopped up a huge supply of HTB BTO flats. We are looking at you know, 100,000 units coming out you know, progressively. And nowadays, the HCB construction speed is a lot faster as well. So uh, the shorter waiting time of three or less years, and this is a great welcome. And therefore, you know, th while there are reasons why HCB price escalation could continue and maybe you continue at faster pace, the increase in supply of HCB BTO flats has offload some of the pressure of the resale market. But this is only, uh, I think, a partial offset. So the question really is, will HDB resale price remain affordable? I think there's a lot of effort by the government to try to curb it. The introduction of the standard plus prime new category has 
force the HDB owners, BTO owners to now wait for 10 years with a lot of restrictions. So this is like um, buying a BTO flat uh, is actually like a lottery effect, like striking total, right? It's almost a sure strike. Because when you buy a BTO and when you sell it, you know, five to 10 years later, you know, there is a huge differential between what you buy and the market rate. By pushing this weight to 10 years, uh, this would actually make people more discouraged. Um, so, or maybe delay the effect. I actually think this is more a uh, moderation. It doesn't curb actually the demand, just moderate it off. So I, I think that the HDB resale flat, as long as a huge HDB BTO price versus the uh, resale price, I think more and more people will, will want to capitalize on this uh, big jump. It's just a free total of sure strike you know, kind of award. So who will not want to have it, right? In fact, right now, because of this new scheme, there's a lot of house owners that engage property owners to now market their house when they are located in this choice location, uh, market these resale flats and tell them that, you know, why you want to buy a BTO flat that you'll be restricted to all these constraints, who buy a new one at their government subsidies if you are a new homeowner and you don't have all these restrictions, right? Therefore, this causes a huge dilemma because, you know, if you buy a prime or plus flat, you have got 10 years minimum occupation period. But if you buy a resale BTO, you get government subsidy, you pay cheaper interest rate compared to a condo. In some cases, a resale flat sizes are actually bigger than the new BTO flats, right? So this cost dilemma to the customers and I think some of them not all some of them will actually then decide they were going to buy the uh, the resale flat so in in that sense I think resale flat demand will continue to be high and even higher with all the factors I've described many of you have been noticing that I've now screamed a lot less about our HDB prices being unaffordable one of the main reason is that now HDB BTO prices are increasingly more glaringly affordable. That's largely because the resale flats keep going up, but I see the HDB BTO prices somewhat stay where they are. Uh, you can get HDB BTOs uh, around, you know, forum flats around 300 over 1,000. Okay, I think that's quite affordable. In Aogang, you can get it. In Chua Chukang, you can get it. In Pongo, you can get it. I think that's reasonable. If you want choice location like Queenstown, Bodo Spring, you can pay a higher price, okay? That will be significantly higher, but that will still not be what we see in those astronomical prices. So just to sum up, I think the government has kept its promise to keep BTO flats affordable. This is causing a lot of market distortion instead of high resale flat prices and low BTO prices. So actually there's a lot of BTO for the effect. I'm actually okay about it. Number one, I've got three children, you know, as long as they can get and enjoy this huge lottery effect, I'm ha happy. But I also think that this kind of thing is uh, actually quite a distortion and I think they will attract the government's uh, hand into this whole thing soon. So the question really is, will there be a cooling measure that the government will slap on the HDB resale market? So I've spoken about this in the earlier videos where I actually say that the private property prices have somewhat tapered off, the rentals have gone down significantly. The only one that is still escalating somewhat out of control is our HDB resale prices and this is something I'm sure if I can see the government can see it so I, I think that the government is not afraid of taking harsh measure even unpopular measure when the situation uh, is needed I think that there's a series of pooling measures that's already been adopted but I think that this kind of situation could actually warrant another cooling measure I actually think that there's a high chance that the government is already contemplating a cooling measure for the HDB resale prices. More than 85% of Singaporeans stay in HDB and more and more of our young Singaporeans will be stepping into HDB as well as they get married and choose to form their families. The HDB resale price escalation has brought joy to many Singaporeans who own HDB flats. More than 85% of Singaporeans are staying in HDB flats or owning HDB flats. And this is something that increased the net wealth of people. But it also brought about a lot of concerns because they, they will drive to increasing unaffordability over time. And this has also caused some distortion in the allocation of wealth and equity. So some people will be making noise and this will cause the government to, to frown. Clearly, the, the price increase is now out of tangent with economic growth. And the minister have actually said that they are not afraid to 
step in and correct this inefficiency that they see. I'm not looking forward to cooling measure because I also own one uh, HDB flats and my children who are likely will take on uh, BTO flats. But I can see it happening if, uh, if increasing chances. I cannot tell you when, but I can tell you that if I can see this, the government can see this. So I think uh, this uh, kind of wrap up the uh, two-part series. Number one is me and getting a deep stick feedback from Dragon Tan about how the property market is. The second part is why I think that there is a likelihood of a strong increase in HGV flats moving forward, but there's also an increasing risk of the government interfering and slap on some cooling measures. Exciting to see how this thing goes. Uh, let's watch on. With this, uh, thank you. And uh, please join us in our Telegram channel where we have 30 5,000 uh, people supporting you with uh, their analysis. And also uh, remember like and subscribe this uh, video and our channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a day or two. Bye-bye.